Hello students, today we're going to add a border to our art. To do that, you pick out the back color that you want. I chose yellow. And then you're going to glue the back of your art. When a glue stick is so low that it's even with its plastic holder, you can recycle or you can put that in the black garbage bin. So I'm looking for one that has just a little bit of glue sneaking up. And then I'm going to add a line across the top. And this is something you have to do kind of quickly before it dries. A line to the right, a line to the left, and it looks like I'm out on that glue stick. So I'm gonna do a line to the right. All right, so all four sides. And then if you want, you can do a simple X through the middle, working as quickly as you can so the glue doesn't dry. Now, I hold it, I hover it above the paper and look with my eyes to see if it's even yellow all the way around. Only when I think I have it even and straight do I let it lower down. And then I begin to massage and press. Massaging and pressing for glue stick should last about 15 seconds at the minimum. So since these papers are both kind of flat, and I know to concentrate around the edge, I can do this maybe even a bit shorter than 15 seconds, counting to 15. All right, so we wanna add a little bit of decoration, and for that we have good old fashioned crayons. Decorations you can add would be lines, or shapes around your whole art piece. And I would like you to use at least two different colors. So I'm doing one pattern all the way around with crayon, purple crayon. And then I'm gonna find another color to add one more feature to this pattern. You can do swirls, any line or shape you want. And I'm gonna Go a little bit faster since I'm getting the hang of it and I don't want you to get bored watching this video. <laughs> so purple is my first color. You really should take your time so the pattern doesn't change as you go around. And that's pretty cool. My second color I'm going to choose is orange and I have to use my imagination for what to do next. How about a circle on these lines? All right, I finished that, and now I'm gonna clean up all the stuff I was using so that I can move on to the next portion of my project, which is the paint. Today, you get to mix a tint of your own paint. Use a small red brush and get a palette that has a color you're interested in and some white. When you're mixing on a palette, don't just scramble the whole thing into one big soup. Use your paintbrush to pull some paint from each pile into a shared spot, leaving some behind. This gives you options later for, do you wanna maybe use some plain purple next time? To mix a tint, you use a lot of white, and just a little color. There, I'm getting a tint of purple, which looks like an awesome Easter color. Once you have a small puddle, that will probably be enough for your clothing. Look at my up and down stroke with this clothing. I want to fill it in. And so I'm going up and down with my flat brush, kind of letting it flap up and down. And using up as much of my mixed paint as I can. Notice that we can still see some black through here. So maybe I'm gonna mix up some more. Remember, way more white than your color. Mixing it until there's no more swirls. 
And if someone mixes a color that you like, you guys can share. If they're all done with their color, you can share it. So part of the fun of today is mixing your own tint and then painting in your clothing, shoes, and hat. And like I said, now I can give this to someone and they can use it for their shoes. Notice if I go back over my initial very thin layer, I can make it less transparent and see the clothes even brighter. All right, we'll let this dry. We'll add details next time.